All right, it's uh, seven o'clock. All right, what a roll call. Certainly, Mayor. Council Member Amundsen? Here. Council Member Hartman? Here. Council Member Jablonski? Here. Vice Mayor Schroeder? Here. Mayor McKay? Here. Okay, do we want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah, Where's it. our flag at? Uh, right behind you. Oh, I have there one. You can do that one. <laughs> there you I go. I have one. There you go. I can hold it. Ready? Okay. I'm standing for the pledge. So. <laughs> you're, st <laughs> you're gonna stand up higher than the flag pledge is flying. To the flag. To the flag. 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 United of the United States, States of America. 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 And to, to the republic, republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, God visible, visible, and justice for all. Justice yes. for all. Okay. Oh, that sounded great, guys. <laughs> that was pretty bad, I have to admit. <laughs> We've got rhythm. <laughs> it wasn't sinking properly, I guess. Sorry about that. Okay. Yep. Quasi, we're going to have to do that over again. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, okay. you want to start this out? The obstruction. Sure, Mayor. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. We uh, can. Uh, we have uh, one uh, quasi-judicial item on the agenda tonight. Um, and if uh, Russell can please uh, read the item into the agenda. Yes, one second. Hold on. Um, okay. Um, Apologize. This is a resolution and final order of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving waiver of plat application number WP-24-20 to subdivide approximately 23.76 acres of property into two lots, generally located at the northeast corner of Sterling Road at its intersection with Southwest 136th Avenue, also known as Holiday Road and described as the west half of tracks 43 and 44, less the west 40 feet were right of way together with the west half of the east half and the west half of the east half of the east half of tracks 41, 42, 43, and 44, less and except the south 40 feet thereof for right of way of the subdivision of section 35, township 50 south, range 40 east, according to the plat of Florida Fruitlands Company subdivision number one, as recorded in plat book two, page 17, of the public records of Miami-Dade County, Florida, said lands situated in the town of Southwest Ranches, Broward County, Florida, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute any and all documents necessary to properly effectuate the intent of this resolution providing for recordation and providing an effective date. Thanks, Russell, could you repeat that? I don't think I caught all that. <laughs> that was longer than the staff report. Since, since this is quasi-judicial, Russell, in accordance with the uh, state law, we're required to swear in uh, anyone who wishes to speak on this item. On video, we can see for purposes of the record, Mr. Hoffman, who is the applicant's counsel, is present and is reported the uh, as the applicant's representative. Jeff Kadams is also present, uh, who's the town staff. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on this item also needs to be sworn in, and when speaking on the item needs to state they've been sworn in, or Russell will have to re-swear them in. So anyone wishing to be sworn in, please raise your right hand, and Russell, if you could uh, please swear them in for the record. Certainly, Keith. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. Okay. For uh, purposes of Mr. Hoffman, who may be new to the town council procedures as it relates to quasi-judicial, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to call Jeff Kadams uh, to uh, give the staff presentation and submission of the staff report. Thereafter, we will allow the council to ask Jeff any questions. Then we will turn it over to the applicant to provide their case. Uh, if it has anything additional to add, the council will then be given the opportunity to ask you questions. Uh, then Jeff closes, you close. Then the public gets to speak if you need to say anything else. 
uh, and then it will go down to the council for deliberation. So at this time, I'm gonna call on Jeff Kadams to present the staff report. Okay, thanks. Um, I think before actually the report, it, it helps explain what's going on if we just go to the, the uh, location map and aerial on page three of the staff report, just so um, you can see what I'm talking about. Give everyone a second to get there. Is that page nine of sixty two? Um, it's page fifteen of fifty two in mine. Oh, okay. Is this the Google Earth shot? <laughs> yeah. It is. It's, it's yeah. the aerial. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the, uh, the property owner, Mr. Assad, owns the entire property that is the subject site that is outlined in red. Mm -hmm. Also owns the property in the, uh, the inside corner of the L. A property just to the left that's being highlighted right now right um, that's only important uh, or relevant for purposes of a memorandum of understanding that was reached between the town uh, and mr. Asai as far as how he would proceed to um, plat the property that's not included in the subject site uh, and to ensure that um, um, that platting happens while all of this, uh, the waiver of plat is, is ongoing. So the subject site is about, it's a little over 23 acres, and you can see it's comprised of three lots of record. Uh, the long story short is that the applicant is recombining those lots to create two new legal descriptions. And uh, the purpose of this and the, the large acreage is to create a family estate. Uh, family compounds, co uh, very much like uh, the Lewin compound further to the east. And that's the same uh, same consultant, consulting engineers and planners, uh, Pilar, they seem to have a specialty here in these family estates. And if you go to the next, not the next, um, page, I think it's three, three down, Russell. Uh, other way. You should be going past the, the aerial that we were just looking at. I believe the aerial is the last page that I have in the backup, Jeff. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There we go. There, there we go. Okay, can you zoom in on that? Yep. Perfect. Sorry. Okay, this is this again was just included for informational purposes and is more relevant. It's just really to help everyone understand the intent, uh, Mr. Assad's intent uh, for the waiver of plat uh, and the plat that's that will be coming before you in the coming months for the property outlined in 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 blue. Okay, uh, so this shows the two lots. Uh, you, you can start to see the lot lines, but there's a lot two and a lot one. And uh, uh, stables, uh, I believe a garage, tennis courts, and, and other types of amenities that would be shared by these different lots. And uh, various family members would occupy these different homes. The reason that uh, Mr. Assad is doing a wafer of plat and a plat is because uh, you can only subdivide one time with a wafer of plat. Uh, you can't, you can't do, you can't create three lots and you can't build, the platting exemption only allows you to build two homes on adjacent properties like this under the same ownership. Uh, so uh, these will be interconnected. They will function just like the Lewin compound does. And just as the Lewin compound, if any of these lots are ever sold uh, individually or all of them, they all stand on their own. 
they all meet minimum requirements, they all have their own legal access, meet all setbacks and all that stuff. So they all can stand on their own. Um, as I said, the plat for the property and the, the outlined in blue will be uh, coming to council. Uh, that's about five acres um, and that's under review right now. Now to the staff report. The petitioner requests approval of a waiver of plat to subdivide 23.76 net acres of undeveloped land at the northeast corner of Sterling Road and Southwest 136th Avenue into two parcels. The property has a land use designation of rural ranch and a zone uh, rural ranches, both of which allow residential development at one unit per two net acres or one unit per two and a half gross acres. Lot one will be 19.36 acres in area uh, and have a width of 165 feet minimum. Lot two will be 4.4 net acres and uh, have almost a, a 394 uh, foot width. Both proposed lots exceed all the minimum requirements for area and dimensions. The petitioner plans to develop lot one with a personal residence and recreational amenities, including horse paddocks, barn, garage, tennis court, pool, and family pavilion. Lot two will contain a residence for a family member. Both lots will be interconnected with driveways and will function as a family compound. A third residence will be constructed on an abutting lot to the west, not included in this application because it is being platted separately uh, and may be connected to lots one and two via an internal driveway. A conceptual plan illustrating this is attached. We just went through that. Um, the proposed subdivision has been configured such that each lot will comply with all ULDC requirements. Each lot will have uh, direct individual access from Sterling Road in addition to the shared access drive so that each lot can stand on its own should the property cease to function as a family estate. The petitioner must dedicate 15 feet of right of way for Sterling Road in order to complete the standard 55 foot half section for this roadway. Uh, the petitioner has taken this into account uh, in the documents submitted. They, they uh, all the figures uh, include that 15 foot dedication. We just need the actual quick claim deed for that. The net acreage uh, of the property uh, will be reduced by a total of 0.17 acres after the dedication uh, will continue to exceed all them the minimum requirements. Additionally, AT&T has requested a 10-foot utility easement along Sterling Road. All of the utility uh, companies have waived any requirement for additional easements. The staff recommendation is as follows. Approval subject to uh, recordation of this resolution um, within six months of the date of approval. And prior to recordation, uh, fulfillment of cost recovery requirements, Dedication of the 15 feet of right of way for Sterling Road, uh, 10 foot utility easement uh, granted for utilities along Sterling Road. And then uh, moving forward uh, as they uh, develop these properties, uh, there's an existing shed on proposed lot one that, that has to be demolished prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for lot one. Uh, the applicant needs to obtain a building permit for the structural fence columns located adjacent to Sterling Road prior to or concurrent with the issuance of the first building permit for a residence. Uh, excavation of future lakes that cross property lines um, are not able to reduce the dry land area of either lot below the two acre minimum. That's very unlikely, but that's in there just hmm. in case. And uh, number six, uh, not reflected in the staff report, but which was added to the resolution is uh, the property owner shall proceed in accordance with the memorandum of understanding between the town and the property owner. Again, which really was to the benefit of the property owner to allow them to understand um, how to develop this property in accordance with all the rules and regulations uh, and on the town's uh, part to ensure that they, they platted lot three. And as I said, we have that plat in our possession and you'll see it soon. Um, I've talked to the applicant, uh, the, the property owner and applicant, and they have agreed to these. Uh, and uh, of course, we'll ask that question on the record. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. Thanks. I've got a question, Jeff. Uh, just, just for the record, uh, in the actual resolution, we added another condition uh, that wasn't reflected in the staff report, but that is 
uh, five on the resolution that just shows that the applicant adheres to the memorandum of understanding between itself and the town dated February 24th, 2020, which is a MOU that I entered into with Mr. Hoffman concerning the future uses of the property and the future plat. So we added that in as number five on the resolution as well. Um, does any member of the town council have any questions of Jeff before I, we turn it over to the applicant? I do. The mayor. I do as well. Okay, the, my question is, you said these three properties can stand alone on their own. Are they have, do they have different folio numbers, each one? Or will they, or how can they, they stand alone? Well, they could stand alone, meaning that none of them depends on another for access. They all get access directly from Sterling Road. Um, they all meet all the minimum requirements for, for an individual lot. So although they may be interconnected and may share use of the amenities and whatnot, um, they don't rely on any of that. Uh, all those internal connections are superfluous. That's just for their convenience. Um, every lot has its own access and, and is legal all by itself without this arrangement. But if you wanted to sell one off, how would that happen? Like any other property. They're okay. all going to have their own folios and their own legal descriptions, which is why we're doing this waiver of plot. Okay. So Jeff, mine kind of follows on Doug's question as well, but it's, it's a little different here. The, the resident, uh, the, the, the property owner is spending a lot of time, energy, money on going through the waiver and, uh, and, and going through the steps here. What's, and, and from what you keep saying, this can be subdivided at will, no different than if, if this exercise was never done. What's, what's the benefit to the uh, property owner to do this? Well, it's not that the property can be subdivided at will. It's that, that individual lots that he's creating can be sold uh, independent of the others. So um, while he's planning on using all of this as a family compound, it doesn't, it doesn't have to, it, there's no unity of title here. Uh, there's no need for these properties to be under the same ownership. Uh, it's really just an arrangement uh, for the benefit of the, uh, the property owner and his, his family. Um, the, uh, the, fa the waiver plot is being done because he wants to reconfigure the three lots he's got, um, the three lots within the subject site. And because he's re reconfiguring the lot lines, even though he's not creating any new lots, he's just reconfiguring the lot lines, he has to come before you for this approval. Got it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Yeah, let um, me. I have go a, ahead, Gary. Go thank ahead. you. Thank you. Jeff, um, I'm, I'm looking in the backup and the recommendation. And uh, according to what you're saying here, there are structural fence columns already built there? Yes. When were they built? Uh, have, you have to ask the applicant that question. I, I only became aware of it uh, when talking to him. And I okay. became aware of the shed when talking to Julio. Okay. All right. Um, the other question is, this is a, um, a very large site, which, you know, potentially in the future can be pretty well broken up uh, into smaller units. I think, what is it, two net acres? Two and a half. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, um, should we require a traffic study for this? This seems to be a large impact on uh, the potential impact on Sterling Road for future use uh the applicant the owner is not going to be able to do any further subdivision without coming back to you so yes it's a it's a fairly large property and um additional lots could be created mm -hmm. uh, which at some point could require site plan approval uh but at the very least they're going to have to come back to you uh for either a plat uh, or a waiver of plat to do any more subdivision in the future. Right, but we're doing the waiver of plat now. That's what's being under consideration. Correct. Okay. All right, that's all I have right moment. That, that pretty much was my question also. I wanted to know uh, if these can all be broke up <coughs> and will we do a study? Also, so, uh, I was uh, gonna say what we don't wanna see is piecemeal, you know, we don't wanna see it done piecemeal to no. avoid a future site plan, a site plan if a site plan would be required. 
Okay. okay. It has in here petitioner plans to develop uh, lot one, uh, personal residence and recreation. This, uh, this applicant doesn't plan on uh, opening up a, uh, uh, a horse farm, uh, perhaps renting out tennis courts, um, family pavilion, and not using that to, uh, to rent out as a pavilion either. This is strictly for family use only, correct? That's his intent, and that's certainly something you could add to the conditions. If, if uh, that, uh, I, well, the family pavilion, we've had issues in the past with people using their places and renting them out. So <clears throat> this is a concern. Uh, we've also had tennis courts leased out to to different people at times. So I, I think I would like to see something put in there that he's just going to use this strictly for family use only. Sounds like Club Med. Yeah, <laughs> not Club Med. So, this property would be covered by our commercial laws, right? You can't conduct commercial activities. What would we add to this to prevent him from doing what on the rest of the town? I don't, I don't know about barns. I mean, I don't know about tennis courts, but, you know, we're, we're talking commercial activities. What would we do differently, Jeff or Keith, to, uh, to prevent I think a simple, a simple addition to the condition stating that um, all recreational amenities on the, on the subject property shall be for the private use of the property owners and their guests, their, their personal guests, something like that. A personal guest is, uh, you know, that's a big window also. Um, so I don't know how you'd want to word it, but Bob has a good point there. Um, because the pavilions have been used in the past, and uh, I know that's been a, a big concern of uh, of the town before. So I see a huge potential here for abuse in the future if we're not very careful. Yes, I do too. We had uh, several instances uh, not too long ago with uh, house parties, as I recall, up and all up and down Sterling Road. Yes, uh, where, where we had to call the police out and they had the helicopters and, you know, it was a whole enchilada. So we don't know, you know, you, you could easily, you could easily have a party of uh, several hundred people there. <laughs> so what kind of verbiage can we put in there, Keith? There we go. I'm unmuted. To cover what you were saying, uh, Councilmember Schroeder, would basically be uh, all portions of the property, including recreational areas and amenities and otherwise, shall be for family use only, no rental or non-family uh, events are permitted. Okay. I think we want that. How's that sound, boys and girls? <laughs> um, sounds, sounds, uh, sounds good. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still concerned about traffic. The, the one thing that I, I would say, Councilmember Jablonski, to respond to your traffic issue, the current delegation request is for only two homes. Thereafter, to get more than two homes, they have to come Actually, back with the plat, which I believe uh, Jeff mentioned that they're currently working on and that they're submitting. So what I would do um, to enable this to move forward uh, and to give you what you're looking for, and it's a suggestion only, is maybe just say that when the plat comes forward, you would like a complete traffic study done on Sterling Road to confirm that if this property was fully subdivided, that the road uh, could handle such traffic without additional improvements. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds better, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are talking a two-lane road here, and it's, yes. the, it's the busiest internal road we have in our town. Yes. And it exceeds 10,000 cars a day, the last time we checked. Or but I'm not like clear. I'm not clear on on why do that now. If they're not intending on building additional houses, or are we worried about the one-off? They, they want to are build another house here. They are, Council Member Hartman. They are uh, preparing a plat 
uh, to build an addition, at least in one addition. No, no, I get that. Uh, no, I, I followed along, Keith. I understand okay. that. But if they're coming back to, you know, Russell, put back up the site. Yeah, all right. That, that's a good shot right there. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're going to put something between, I guess, the, uh, the paddock areas in the back and the house, you know, f squeeze something in between the family pavilion and the big main house, sure, they'd have to come back. So there's one more house. Then to the, what would that be, uh, southeast of the big house, kind of in the direction of where it says proposed lot one. Mm -hmm. If they're going to put house, I mean, I'm not sure why we would address that now. Because not, counts, I can answer that, Council Member Hardy. Okay. Thank this you. is not site plan approval. This is a plat. So although they're showing you their pretty picture to tell you what they're thinking of developing, ah, there's nothing no that locks them into developing that. Got it. Thank you, Keith. Okay. That clarifies. <laughs> it also doesn't have on their groom's quarters. Are they planning groom's quarters that should be listed on here? Horse paddock barn with a place that big? I mean, I can only assume that they're going to have someone actually living on the property to maintain the the horses, the paddocks, or whatever. You know, we're looking at a pretty picture. You could move a whole bunch of mobile trailers on there. Oh, yeah. There. Oh, yeah, you could. You absolutely could. You know. Keith, just to clarify, you want? are you suggesting that condition about the traffic study for the plot of the five acres? I, I'm suggesting us? that it be done at time of plotting to enable this to move forward without a hold up to the applicant. All right, so are there any other questions for staff at this time? Not no. a uh, seeing none, in accordance with the Jennings rule, and before we turn it over to Mr. Hoffman, um, it, has anyone had any ex parte communications uh, concerning this matter? No. 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 Okay, Mr. Hoffman, uh, I'm now going to turn it over to you. Um, hopefully you've been able to hear the, the proceeding. I think you're unmuted now. Is that correct? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Perfect. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so Mr. Hoffman, if you could just please state your name and address for the record and whether or not you've been sworn in, then I'll ask you three other questions. Sure. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Steve Hoffman with the law firm of Hackleman Alden Judd at uh, 2426 East Los Olas Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. You read the staff report. You've read the conditions. Uh, there were only uh, uh, two other conditions that the council added. One was meaning that the property would be utilized for family use only and not rented out. I think in our discussions, that was never even a consideration of renting it out. Um, and then the second thing was to move the traffic study to the plat to not hold you up on, on, the, uh, on this approval. Uh, were those conditions acceptable to you and your client? Um, the, uh, as far as uh, the non-commercial use of the property, absolutely. Um, uh, don't have any problem at all with that. As far as the traffic study is concerned, I'm not really um, quite understanding uh, the need for a traffic study for uh, two homes or three homes. Um, I, I get if we were subdividing this into, you know, 10 or 12 different lots, but right now our, the only thing in front of the council is uh, a, a, an application for two, two homes. Um, and the traffic impact of these two homes is, is quite negligible um, uh, on the, on the road. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I, I kind of uh, a little flummoxed at, at that request. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, what is the traffic impact to the roads from the two homes? Um, well, uh, in addition to myself, I've got uh, uh, Jason Wilson uh, from Polar Engineering. Uh, he might be able to, uh, he's here uh, or attending as well. He might be able to, um, uh, uh, to discuss this, but you know, we're, we're talking about uh, essentially three homes here on 30 acres. Um, where, this is not a uh, not a big not a big demand on on the um, uh, on the roadway system. The last question that was asked of council, then I'll turn it over to you for your presentation, and your your expert can testify to that um, uh, about the traffic. Uh, is there going to be a groom's quarters on the property? That was the only other 
notation I wrote down? No, no. Okay, so that answers that question. All right, at this point, at some point, it's uh, turned over to you for your complete uh, presentation. Sure. Well, good evening, Council. Uh, I have the pleasure of representing the Assad family uh, in this application. Uh, as I had indicated, my name is Steve Hoffman with the law firm of Hackleman Olive and Judd. Uh, in addition to myself, uh, I have Jeremy Shear with the law firm of Becker and Polyakov uh, at Fort Lauderdale, uh, Jason Wilson of Pilar Engineering, and Issa Assad uh, as the applicant. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you so much for holding this meeting virtually. Um, it's really forward thinking and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, your efforts in this regard. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Jeff for a uh, pretty thorough uh, presentation. He kind of stole a lot of my thunder. Uh, so I'm going to keep this a little short and sweet and uh, answer questions. I think that's probably the best way to proceed. Uh, we've worked very closely with uh, town staff and the town attorney over the last several months uh, to get to this point. Uh, in a nutshell, essentially all we're doing is requesting uh, to take parcels totaling a little less than 25 acres yeah. and turning them into two residential lots. Uh, that's what I just had indicated. Uh, all, both lots uh, meet the current uh, requirements of the uh, RR district uh, for uh, road uh, frontage, uh, size, and width. Uh, each lot has a driveway that connects to Sterling Road. And uh, this request meets the, uh, fully meets the town requirements under section 115-010 of the town code dealing with plat waivers. Um, as, uh, as Jeff had indicated, uh, Mr. Assad will have um, some amenities in addition uh, to the home on lot one, uh, which includes a barn and stable um, for horses. Uh, and the intended use for these lots perfectly meet the spirit and intent of the RR district. Uh, Mr. Assad is using local architects, uh, Peter or, or Philip Aguirre, uh, to design the homes. Um, and he's also using local builders, Rick Wingate of Sun, Sun, Summit Homes and Rick Bell of Landmark Homes to uh, construct it. So with Jason Willi uh, Wilson, who's been in front of you numerous times, uh, we've got a pretty uh, good team of local uh, guys who are super familiar with uh, Southwest Ranches and, and their requirements. Um, and with that, I will conclude my presentation and uh, we'd be happy to uh, address any, qu uh, any questions that you may have. Did you want at this point, Mr. Hoffman, for your uh, engineer to discuss the traffic impacts to the roadway? Uh, yes, we're actually on a... <laughs> yeah, actually on a Jason, Jason is uh, raising his hand. I'm trying to promote him as from an attendee to a panelist, which is what I was under the impression I could do, and I'm having a little difficulty, so if you just bear with me, trying to so figure Jason, out. So Jason and I are on a text uh, together, um, and uh, we're talking about a total of nine trips per day for the two homes on the, on the 25 acres. Thank you. Uh, uh, when he gets on, what we'll do then while Russell's trying to promote him, to speed this along, does any council member have any questions of Mr. Hoffman? Uh, this is the time to do so. I just, I have a question if I yeah. may. I'm, I'm just thinking as what I've heard is anything that they plan to do in addition to what we see here and what's being asked, they have to come before the town. Is that correct for, for more uh, okay, permitting and things Hold like on, that? Jason. Uh, yeah, for there you go. permits, the answer would be yes. Uh, not right. you all, but meaning the town building department. Yes, I do mean that. Because, I don't really mean because me. this is uh, uh, two single-family homes. Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they have to come back before the council for a site plan. This correct. is the only time the council sees right. it. Right. I meant correct. if they wanted to build another home on the property and or two more homes on the property itself, they would have to have some sort of plans approved, no? The, the, the building department would need to approve the two homes. Uh -huh. Any more than those two homes would come back before the council for gotcha. further subdivision uh, okay. of the property. All right, and, and if they it's, wanted to change it to uh, 30 is homes. Is this all coming in clear to everybody? Yes. 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 I don't know. Yes. 
I've, I've right. been known to be garbled in the, in the past, but uh, yeah, okay. I, I think I understand You're that right. much, I but that. I mean, if, if anything else wanted to be changed uh, as to the amount of dwellings on the property, for instance, if they decide in 10 years, 20 years to sell it and someone wants to come in and make multiple properties, they definitely have to come in before the Definitely. town or whatever, right? Even and one that, more home would require that's how I That's how I understand yeah, it. So I sure. just want to clarify. Thank if, you. If, if we wanted to add one more lot, we would have to come back in front of you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, essentially, just keep in mind, what we're doing is we're taking 30 acres and putting three homes on those 30. Exactly. Acres. Sounds so, nice to me. Yeah. Thank I you. have a question for Mr. Hoffman. <clears throat> I may. Sure. Um, sure. One of the conditions is that you have to, and I'm reading, obtain a building permit for structural fence columns already located adjacent to Sterling Road prior to the concurrent with issuance of the first building permit for residents. Um, why were they built? Um, I think they, they were built, uh, the, the property was uh, uh, considered ag, uh, it was ag exempted. And so under the uh, those rules, um, building fences did not require a permit um, but uh, I, I don't think are, we, I don't think you're correct on that sir okay um, but we are agreeing that uh, these uh, these columns are going to be permitted properly uh, with the permit for the house okay another question I have for you um, I've heard uh, in the last several months through the grapevine um, that uh, the property owner was in litigation with residents. Uh, has that been concluded? Is there anything, do you know anything about that? Yes, um, uh, that, uh, that dispute has been settled uh, amicably between the two parties. How amicably? Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a comp it's a confidential settlement uh, between the two parties. Okay. Are there any other outstanding? No, uh, no. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Assad has met with uh, all of the neighbors uh, uh, on the property and uh, has shown them what he's doing. Uh, he's also provided them with his personal cell phone number uh, that they can contact him directly uh, in the event that there's any concerns during the construction process or otherwise. This uh, property butts right up to Halatee. There's never going to be access uh, going in or out on Halatee, is there? Did everybody hear me? I, I heard you, yes. Mr. Hoffman. The question was, is there going to be access to Holiday, or is, I, or is it only Sterling? Uh, Jason, do you uh, know? I, I know that the site plan is still in a state of flux, but can you ask, answer that? Jason, Absolutely. Just for the record, if we, I'm so sorry. It's, this is all broke up. I'm not hearing any of it. Just slow down one second then. Jason, just for purpose of the record, if you could state your name, uh, address, and that you've been sworn in, then answer the questions. And Council Member Schroeder, um, if you cannot hear, uh, you may want to dial in and Russell can uh, get her the dial in also so she can listen to him while watching as well. Okay. Uh, Jason Wilson. Okay, well, it's a little clearer now. Uh, Jason Wilson, uh, Pillar Consultants, uh, representing the applicant. No, it's uh, address on. is 5230 South University Drive in Davie, Florida. Jason, uh, Jason, so I want Council Member Schroeder to be able to hear everything. Absolutely. Take your time. So what I'd like her to do, Russell, if you don't mind, call Council Member Schroeder, give her the, the dial-in number from telephone. Can I give so it to you right now? I have it right. I, uh, she's calling me. Okay, never mind. Sorry about this, folks. Keith, I've got a question once uh, D returns. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. 
We can hear you and see you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear us? I can hear you now. Good. Okay. Let's make a commercial. So Jason is on, I guess. Let's try it again then, and if you need me to give you the phone number, I'll give you the phone number. Okay. Keith and Russell, uh, let me know when you feel comfortable to move forward. You can go ahead, Jason. Okay. Um, there is already an existing access on Hilati. Um, it's a, uh, a culvert. It meets the minimum size standards from Central Broward Water Control District. Uh, we're planning on uh, improving the canal bank on the, uh, the owner's side of the property for future canal maintenance. Uh, but there already is an access there and they would like to continue to be able to utilize that as a secondary access for either their horses or an RV uh, access towards the, uh, the barn. So, so to, without putting words in your mouth, you're saying it's a limited purpose access? Yes, it is not the main access. The, the main access for the two homes are off of Sterling. <laughs> And when the uh, site plan comes to the town, you'll denote it as such so we don't have to worry about that. Sure. No. We can do that. Russell, can uh, you put back up the site plan with the home improvements on it? Yeah. Yes. Give me one second, please. Sure. Um, I do have a question that I wanted to throw out, Keith. I just heard a minute ago that this. So, yeah, what I was pointing out, what I wanted to point out is the road is on the plan. On the left-hand side, Russell, maybe you need to squeeze it to the left. There you go. Oh, okay. Is that I the a existing secondary access for main house? Is that what we're worried about, that road right there? Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Okay. Okay. You know, but Good. if you've got, you know, he just said for RV use, I mean, how many RVs? Are we talking one, 20? I mean, you get a lot of RVs on that much property. <laughs> Sure. If, if I'm not even sure if the owner actually owns an RV at this point, uh, but I'm sure it would be just a single use. Okay. So yeah, where, where my question was uh, a few minutes ago is I heard that this is still in flux. Um, that kind of worries me. I mean, to what degree of flux? What I'm looking at is I thought what we're going to be approving here. What, uh, what still has to be decided other than the language that uh, Keith proposed earlier for you know, the requirements that we're asking for? Uh, again, just for the record, for Council Member Hartman, they, they are not bound by anything you see in front of you uh, out their site plan. What they're bound by is the lot delineation that they're here before you tonight, which is a delegation request to split the property into two lots. So we don't know yet Got what it. they're gonna build. They're showing it to you now as a one proposal. I've seen probably three of these uh, in different um, uh, ways. So please don't get caught up on, on what they're showing, but ask your questions more so on the lot split and like Council Member Schroeder stated, what's gonna happen on the access uh, the secondary access so that when the site plan comes forward, which is reviewed internally by staff, that we can make sure that your issues are, are noted within that site plan. Understood. So this is the completed plat that they're looking for minus the language that we'd like them to insert. And we have to ask the questions now with an eye towards site use later on when they come at us with the site plans. But they will never come before you as a council. Right, right, right. Yeah, they'll be going to the building department. Understood. Thank you. Any other member of the town council have any questions of the applicant? So, uh, Keith, I guess to try to put a control in place on this can we limit the number of residents on this plat so that we don't start get, getting nickel and dimed <laughs> so this it stays this way more or less no i mean they're I'm, they're talking about three houses now we don't want them to talk about four five six seven eight nine ten 
can we put a limitation of the number of residents constructed or buildings constructed on the site to maintain the integrity of what we're we're seeing tonight? Well, again, I'm not hearing you. You're on mute. Yeah. Thank you, uh, council member. Uh, the, the plan that's before you tonight limits them to two single family homes. They are planning on coming back. They've told us this with a plat to add in a third home. So, but right now, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, under this delegation request, the only thing they can build here are two single family homes. Under this waiver of plat, two homes, that's it. Thank you. So it's at the plat that you could add in those additional restrictions, council member. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question, Keith? Of course. Okay. Suppose they, uh, sell, suppose they sell these two properties, then what? If they sell those two properties that are being subdivided tonight, still a new owner could only build one single family home per parcel. Now, if they chose to re-plat uh, each parcel, then they could do the most allowed by uh, town code. But <laughs> even if they sold them tomorrow, they still could only build one home on each parcel without coming back to the council. Okay. So, so to replant, they have to come before us anyways, correct? And they are intending to in order to build the third parcel. And Mr. Hoffman, if I'm stating anything that's not correct, please jump in. No, that's accurate. Uh, essentially, as, as we have stated uh, on several occasions, we're only uh, planning to build two homes here um, uh, together with the third home that's being platted. Uh, if we uh, intend uh, sometime way in the future that uh, plans change or things change, we would have to come before you to do anything or before the, the town council. Uh, we could not add any more homes or, or subdivide the property any further without uh, coming before you. Uh, so um, right now, all we're planning to build are these two homes on these two lots. Uh, and then the third home that will be built on the lot that's being platted, which is uh, also uh, going to be coming for, before you uh, in you know, hopefully a month or so. Thank you. Before we open it up to the public, does any other member of the town council have any other questions of Mr. Hoffman or Mr. Wilson? Not at this time. Nope. Okay, so Russell, I'm going to turn it over to you to handle the, the public hearing because you have to mute and unmute anyone who wishes to speak. Mm -hmm. Again, anyone who wishes to speak, ask them this morning and state their name and address for the record. We have one person raising their hand. You? Looks like the petitioner's got his hand raised. First person that's raising their hand, Issa Asad. Do mind getting that? Mr. Mr. Hoffman, I, I believe your client wishes to speak. It's not normally done as public participation. Do you wish to call your client? Yeah, and then I've got to move him out when he's done speaking. Um, I think he was uh, going to say something with regard to um, the location of the uh, the homes on the uh, on the lots, especially the way that the um, uh, the location and, and configuration of these lots. It it really would inhibit any kind of fur further development or, or subdivision of the property. Um, but um, as far as uh, you know, certainly there's no commercial uses intended. Uh, or will ever be placed on this uh, property. And I believe your zoning uh, prohibits that. Um, and we have no problem with, you know, adding a, a, that restriction as well. Just one thing, because it sort of contradicted what I said. Are you stipulating for the record that this is the site plan that you are building? No, this is okay, not. So, it's, uh, so, so you can't state that, you know, based on the configuration of the homes, because the homes may move. Uh, with with regard to the location, they're they're in the approximate locations uh, as what is shown here. Um, you know what? Uh, um, they're, they're just not going to be any more homes than than what we're showing. Um, it's just these. This is uh, what you're looking at. Is the approximate location? Uh, it might shift. You know, a few feet one way or the other. But uh, in essence, if you look at it, uh, it almost renders the uh, property, um, the, the rest of the property, uh, you know, um, very difficult to re-subdivide uh, any, any further. 
Okay, thank you. So do you wish for your client to speak or should we move on to the public? Uh, I think we can move on to the public. All right, Russell, back to you. Okay, Keith, we have one member of the public that wishes to speak and, uh, at this point. Uh, Anna Coldis is the first person, so I'm going to allow her to speak. She'll have two minutes to speak on this public hearing item. Go ahead, Ms. Coldis. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Okay, terrific. Thank you. So uh, one thing I'd like to mention is... Wait, Ms. Coldis, if you could please stay for the record your name, your address, and whether or not you've been sworn in, then you can proceed. Yes, my name is Anna Coldis. I live at 16201 Sterling Road. And when you um, did the oath earlier, I was raising my right hand. Thank you, please proceed. Okay, thank you. So there is a small group of Southwest, Southwest Ranches residents who would like to get in touch and stay in touch with our neighbors who are senior citizens, live alone or have special needs. And what we do is give them regular phone calls. On Ms. Ms. Coldis, Ms. Coldis, yeah. if I can interrupt, are you speaking on this particular item or are you speaking on uh, just the item related to the COVID response? I apologize, I thought this was now general public comments. So no, no. It's, it's not at this time. Okay, All thank, right, you. thank you. We'll call back on you at that time. All righty. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Russell. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on the uh, waiver of plat? The owner does. Okay. I so, see. I see no other members of the public raising their hands at this time. I, I heard that uh, uh, the applicant does want to speak. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Hoffman, I'll turn it back over to you briefly, if you wish to uh, ask questions of uh, your client. Thank you, Isa. Uh, you you have um, uh, something that you would like to clear up for the uh, uh, the council? Yes. Thank you for your uh, holding this meeting tonight, and uh, thank you for your time today. I just want to clear up a couple of concerns. Uh, if you look at the proposed site plan that's up right now, and you look at the placement of the two homes that are uh, close to Sterling, you'll notice those homes are approximately almost dead center in the middle of the lot. That is within probably 15 to 20 feet of where they'll exactly be. And that will prohibit any further homes on the other lots because they won't meet any setbacks. So that lot cannot be divided. Those two lots cannot be divided. Any <clears throat> the third thing is the proposed lot one home actually does sit a little bit further back, about 25 to 30 feet. And it would also inhibit the northeast corner and the southeast corner from any development whatsoever because those homes could not meet the setback. The uh, barn, which is in the northwest quadrant, uh, is actually being, it is pretty much where it's gonna be. And to establish any further homes on this property, we would have to come before the city and the council to get additional platting. Um, I commit to the city that right now our intent is three homes. When will that change? Maybe in 10 or 20 years, my sons want to build an additional home. But it, it, they, to do so, they'd have to come in front of the city to do so, and they'd have to get a new plat waiver and a new platting, and the council would have to approve any additional homes, which is not on our radar. We're not doing it today. We have no intention of doing it in the next five or 10 years. Uh, we, there's no intent of that. Uh, the situation of the homes themselves, and the question was asked why we're doing this. If you look at the aerial, you'll notice that the lot is thin. The original aerial, which was, I believe, two pages back. Mm -hmm. And the the reason that we have to that we're asking for the plat waiver is the home on lot two does not fit. No home, it's too narrow. It won't fit without us combining lots. That is the purpose of this endeavor. Uh, and that's why we're doing it because it just doesn't mathematically fit. The uh, question in regard, and I hope that answers your question there. The question in regards to commercial use, there will be no rentals, no business, no commercial use whatsoever. The family pavilion is just that. It's for me and my immediate family. Um, there'll be no horse stabling, no horse <laughs> barns for rent or anything like that. Uh, so I hope that answers that question. Um, and I, I believe 
the positioning. I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen or no? No. No. Okay. I won't let me do that. Hang on. Let me see. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can do something here. I can see him. Oh, well, you can see him, but we can't see his screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You'd probably rather see my screen than see me, but you know. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> nah. Russell, can you hit share at the bottom? Share his it, says, it says you cannot start screen share while other okay. participant is sharing. Yeah, Russell, if you stop yeah. sharing, he can share. Yeah, I got to do it over here. Hang on a second. Stop sharing yours. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I will share my screen, which is right there. Russell, you restarted. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Try it again. There. there. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Great. So when you look at my screen, you, this is the way the plot, the property sits today. Mm -hmm. And if you look right here, where my mouse is, can you see that? Yep. Yes. So yeah. now, if you look how thin that lot is, this is the proposed site. It's going to go. The two square box is going to be the home. Same thing over here. If you look at lot one. It goes over the lot, and that was the purpose of why I'm doing this is because the house is, the way the lots are situated, I can't make it work without combining the lots. Mm -hmm. That is the whole purpose of this. Lot three, where the house will be for lot three, right here, is already at five acres. It's already self-standing. It's already self-serving. So there's nothing to do there, really. It's just, it's already there. And we're going through a plot again because the town acquired it. There is no hidden agenda or commercial use or anything of that nature. When the question came up about the fence, I put the fence up. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall, the, the cow that's on that property was in the news uh, because it got loose. It was missing at the feed store. So the, the prior owner had a bunch of just, uh, uh, I want to say, little racks leaned up against the front of the property, and the cows were escaping every day. So the city cited the old owner two or three times for that. So I put up the fencing knowing there's going to be in the future. But at the end of the day, when the plat when the uh, construction plans come in, the gate, the fence columns, all of that is part of the master construction plan, and everything will be up to code and follow all guidelines the city puts forward. Thank you, uh, Mr. Asad. Russell, you want to take back control of the screen? Yes. I think I have to stop sharing. Yes. Um, does any member of the town council have any questions of Mr. Assad? Not at this time. No, thank you for filling yeah. in some of the blanks. Okay, seeing none. Yes. We, we, have, we have one other speaker that wishes to be recognized. Uh, he didn't hit the right uh, cue on the, on, the, on the button, but I believe he wants to speak. Uh, David Kaczynski, did you still want to speak? Please hit star nine if you want to raise your hand to speak. David, if you're out there and you're listening, star nine raises your hand. Okay, not quite sure what's going on there. Russell, can you just uh, unmute his line so he can speak, or he has to raise his hand first? Uh, might have to move him over. Hang on one second. Given that you're seeing his name, nope. he's probably on a computer versus a phone. Hello? Oh, I see that, Bob. So you're correct. Yeah, all you need to do is press unmute on his uh, picture. Right. I was on Zoom for seven there hours is. today. There he is. There he is. is this going to work? Yes. Go ahead, David. You have. We can hear you. Right. And my question is. Right, Mr. Kaczynski. Please state your name and address no. for the record. And if you've been sworn in, then you can ask your question. David Kaczynski, 6411 Holly T Trail. Uh, I have been sworn. My question is that. There are uh, horse trails along the property edges. I want to make sure that those are preserved for uh, the public to have access to horses, horse trails. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, do you want to address that question? Yes, absolutely. Um, similar to the Lewin properties uh, to the east, uh, we're, we're providing additional right-of-way and also we're being required to improve the canal banks and provide a uh, literally flat uh, horse trail um, and canal maintenance area on the north side of the canal, which as far as I understand, uh, extends uh, the, uh, the horse trail along that portion of roadway. And the same thing is also uh, happening uh, going north on Pilate. Thank you. Any other questions from the town council? Seeing Not you know, at this time. Uh, Keith, Jeff, Keith, Keith, yeah. Keith, we have one other speaker that uh, apparently wishes to uh, speak. Uh, I see a hand raised by Road. So I'm going to allow them to speak here. I'll have two minutes. Again, uh, name and address for the record uh, and if you've been sworn in. Russell, you have to unmute them. Yeah, I've been hitting the unmute several times. It's not unmuting them. Um, I don't know. Do they have a microphone on their computer at home? I don't know. Yes, they should. Well, I'm hitting unmute, and it's not unmuting. If they do, it would be on the lower right-hand side of their screen. Road is Lasky. He's unmuted. There he is. Steve. Mr. Lasky, is that you? Jim Lasky, 5780 South West 180. I noticed there's a... And have you been sworn, Mr. Mr. Lasky, have you been sworn in? I can't hear him. No, likewise. He's, he's yeah, weak. I'm not hearing. Mr. Lasky, have you been sworn in? Yes. You have. Okay. Can you speak directly into your phone or whatever device you're using? You're coming in very faint. Okay. Can you hear me better now? A little oh. bit. Still, still very low. I'd have to just turn his sound up. I have no control over his sound volume. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> I meant the individual. Or, or Russell, maybe also give uh, Mr. Lasky the phone number to call in. And while he's doing that, uh, we can get uh, comments from uh, uh, Jeff and the applicant. Um, and then we'll turn it back over to Mr. Lasky. Great. I'll call back. Okay. Do you have the number to call in? Yeah, I called once before, but, you know, when I put in the number, they said I wasn't allowed to speak on that number. Actually, Mr. Lasky, we can now hear you if we pop yeah. up our volume. So if you could just proceed. Okay, great. I got a question about that uh, right away that he's vacated. Formerly, I don't believe you own the right away, did you? Keith, you're on mute. Shoot. He was, thank you. He was asking questions about the right of way that was vacated, vacated and who owns the right of way. Mr. Wilson, do you know anything about that? Um, no, I'm not aware of any vacation. We're actually dedicating an additional 15 feet of right of way uh, within the property. Uh, but I'm not aware of any vacations for this, for this project. I used the wrong. The town is taking the right of way. He responded by saying the town is taking the right of way. Yes, that is correct. It's going to be dedicated to the town. Like a familiar problem we have on 188th Avenue. Um, as far as I'm aware, you don't own my right of way. So where do we go with this? It's a requirement. Okay. Right. I've never had to fulfill a requirement, and I believe you guys are attempting to take a right away from me. All right. Well, we're talking about this current item. You can bring that up during public comment. Any other questions to this applicant? Uh, no, sir, but I think you got my point. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lasky. Um, all right, Russell, are there no more public speakers? That is correct, Keith. Okay, at this point, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Jeff Kadams for final comments, and Mr. Hoffman for final comments, 
I'll, I'll try to sum everything up and, and turn it back over to the council for deliberation and final questions. Nothing for me. Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, I, again, uh, the, um, uh, this is a, uh, a relatively uh, simple request in that we're um, require, are requesting that uh, three lots that are totaling a, a little less than 25 acres are combined uh, and reconfigured to uh, result in two residential uh, lots where only two uh, homes will be built. Um, uh, these, land, these lots uh, are fully um, compliant with the zoning. Uh, this, uh, the application is fully compliant with your plat waiver uh, process. And uh, we ask for your consideration and approval of this, uh, of this application. Thank you. And just for the record, the additional things that I heard for the council's uh, deliberation uh, was uh, one, that uh, the property only be utilized for family purposes only. We previously stated that, that it wouldn't be rented and Mr. Assad uh, agreed to that. Um, it was also stated uh, by the applicant himself that the site plan shows the approximate location of the homes. Uh, so uh, that's been taken care of and that can be included as well. Uh, in the rental provision, he mentioned that there'd be no stabling of horses, no renting out of stalls as well. Um, the other things that were mentioned were there's no groom's quarters on the property and that the Holiday Trail access will only be a limited use access and not a primary access on the property. And the final thing that was brought up by Mr. Uh, Councilmember Jablonski but was not fully stipulated to is Councilmember Jablonski wanted a traffic study submitted at the time of platting uh, to be able to consider the plat request. Other than that and the conditions of staff, it's before you for consideration. I do have one more comment to make. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. That uh, access off of Hallity, uh, that has great concern. Uh, I know that it was said that it will be limited use for horses or RV. What do we do to prevent cars just going in and out on an everyday basis from there? It will be a condition of this approval and tied to their site plan. So it can be enforced via code enforcement, but the applicant's uh, representative has already stipulated that that is not a primary access on the property. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You're on mute. You're on mute, can't hear you. I'm not on mute. Oh. No. Keith, what? I, I said, sorry, I, I keep doing it to try to avoid an issue when I'm creating them. Uh, Mayor, it's before <laughs> you and the council for final questions, deliberation. This is a plat. It's quasi-judicial. requires a unanimous uh, consent of the council. You've heard the staff conditions. You've heard the additional conditions that were raised during the meeting. If it's approved, it would have to be subject to staff conditions and the conditions uh, that were raised at the meeting tonight or any other conditions or alternatives you wish to make. So we okay. make a motion on that? Yeah, somebody oh, needs to. Dear. Make a motion to approve. Second. It's that again, subject to the staff conditions and the stipulations and conditions raised yes. tonight? Yes, yes. And I see Mr. Assad shaking his head yes as well. For the right. Could, could we repeat all of that? <laughs> <laughs> really, it's important. Yes. No, seriously, what all the what all the stipulations are? Can we? Sure, and, and we will delineate it clearer in the actual resolution itself. But the resolution added the number five uh, that's already in there that spoke about the fact that they'll abide by the memorandum of understanding that Mr. Hoffman and myself uh, and and uh, your administration entered into. Uh, the the next one was that it would be utilized for uh, family purposes only. No rentals or non-family events will occur at the property including no stabling of horses or rental out of stalls. Um, that uh, the Halati Trail access will be a, a limited use access only, that it will not be utilized in any way, shape, or form as a primary access, and it will only be for you, uh, limited use. There will not be a groom's quarters on the property, that the property will be built in substantial conformity based upon what Mr. Hoffman said, they may shift some houses, which are totally fine but it will be built in substantial conformity with the site plan presented before you tonight. And the final one is at the time of plat, they will tender a traffic study looking at the traffic on Sterling Road. 
Other than that, um, uh, there were no other uh, conditions that can the council raised. Can I, can yeah, I just we, clarify something as the owner? Sure. The, yeah. We say no groom's corner quarters. Obviously, we're building a barn, but there will be no additional people living there if that, if that helps. That's that's what. Yeah, they, that's okay. okay. I just make sure because it will have quarters and stuff, but nobody's going to live there. That's, oh, that's exactly what they mean. Okay, no problem. Um, and the, for uh, clarification, uh, with regard to the traffic study, is that to be performed at the time uh, that we uh, do the platting of the third home? Yes. Yeah, so we're pushing it to give you time to do it with the submission of the plat to the town and the county. Uh, so that you can just do it and he can start construction on these first two homes now and it won't impact him time-wise at all. Is that what you meant, Gary? Yes. Okay. That's acceptable. Okay. Um, I, let me just ask for a clarification from Mr. Assad. Uh, a minute ago, you had, I believe I heard you right when you said that there are going to be quarters built in the barn, but nobody's going to live there. I, I don't want to say quarters, but the, it's a barn. So we'll have rooms, it will have, I haven't designed it yet. So I just don't want to limit the design to something that doesn't make sense. But I well, so, so just so we're clear, and, and I guess what we're trying to protect against, in the past, barns have been built with what's called groom's quarters. And basically it's a small apartment for whoever is working on your property, tending to your horses, maintaining your, your grounds, lives there. And that's no, where the concern is. No, no, nobody, nobody that will live there that is, does not have the last name aside. <laughs> yeah, that might be the spot for time out then, huh? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> just for the record, I know you're joking, but even if they had the last name Assad, they legally could not live there. Yeah, no, uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> we're not we're not making it for an apartment or a rental or anybody living there. No. See, that's what happens. People build them; they they use them with the right intent for years. The next person buys it, and it becomes it, it's, a it's, rental. Honestly, it's game room. It's a theater. It's a uh, hangout for the kids. It is not anybody. Nobody will live there. That's all I have Good. to say. Good. Thank you. Uh, the other Thank you, point Bob. Of, the other point of clarification uh, is that you had indicated with regard to uh, the development would be in substantial conformity with this site plan. Um, you know, the, um, the configuration of the homes, um, I, I think, is different than what is shown here, at least today. Um, so the, the location is, uh, of the homes is generally in the same place, but the configuration uh, of the homes uh, is, uh, uh, is a little different. So I don't want to be you know, tied to that. Understood. Is it better to say, uh, I, I said substantial, we could say general conformity. Does yeah, it I mean, generally it, it, look like that? Maybe we could say the location of the homes is general, uh, the three homes is generally in. Yeah, that's in the most point. important, not the okay. actual sidewalks yeah. and everything else. Behind. Right, right. Yeah, so let's just say the general location of the homes is, is in accordance with, with the site plan. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Okay, Mayor, you have a motion. Uh, I think, was there a second? I, I lost. Yes, track. there was. Yes, there was. So, Mayor, it's up to you for final deliberation and vote. Do we make another motion, seeing as how he did say there will be groom's quarters? Because that no, was no, changed. He, he did not he say there were groom's that. quarters. Oh. Uh, he said there will not be groom's quarters. So, there's okay. no condition here. Okay. There may be a tack room, but there's no quarters. Absolutely. Nobody will live there. You all heard okay. it. Okay. Any additional comments from the council? Not for me. No. All no. right. Call the question. Council Member Amundsen? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Schroeder? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. Thanks, You're Assad. welcome. Thank you. Russell, uh, for us, if you can, unless they, uh, Mr. Assad and, and Mr. Wilson and Mr. Hoffman, if you desire to stay on, we're happy to keep you on. But if not, I will <laughs> clear you off and, and so that you're not active participants in the meeting. That's fine. Is that okay? Fine. Yeah, thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Right, Gentlemen, you. have a good evening. You too, so Russell. Thank you. Be safe, everyone. Thank you. You Bye. too. You too. Thank you. So, Russell, if you could please make them non-active participants, and then we'll yeah. continue with the meeting. Yeah, I'm going to make them attendees if they want to still listen to the meeting. Just give me a second here.
We got to do roll call and pledge all over again, though, don't we? No, no. No, it's the same meeting, Mayor. It was just a quasi-judicial yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I think I have everybody now. Okay. Would you like me to read the next item there? Yes. Oh, that's public, right. yeah. I'm sorry. Public, public comment. comment. Keith, did you want to read the uh, rules of public comment? Uh, well, the rules for public comment are definitely in the agenda, uh, but it's uh, each speaker is limited to three minutes on non agenda items. And so, Russell, how many speakers do you have tonight? Because we're but, limited. I know Miss I know Miss Coldis wanted to speak, so if she's still on, I'm going to call her first, and then um, I believe Mr. Kaczynski would like to speak as well. So, uh, Miss Coldis, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you have you have three minutes. Okay, thank you. My name is Anna Coldis. I reside at 16201 Sterling Road. And I had two comments. The first one is that I wanted to uh, promote to any uh, town members who might be on this call that there's a small group of Southwest Ranches residents. Uh, two of the members are retired nurses. And what we are trying to do is get in touch and stay in touch with our neighbors who are senior citizens or, and or live alone or have special needs and would like to have a regular check-in phone call from one of us. And if you are someone that that service might, um, might be of interest to you, our number is 954-546-2599. And again, that's 954-546-2599. And uh, there'll be a message that comes on and then one of our volunteers will get back to you uh, within 24 hours. And we've also been putting together resource lists so that if there is something specific you need, we hopefully uh, will be able to point you in the right direction. But if you really don't need anything other than just company and a phone call, uh, we would be uh, delighted uh, to do that. We're all separated from our families as well. And so it's our pleasure uh, to check in with you. And then the second item I had is with one resident who I was speaking with, she's in a high risk group and she was wondering uh, if I could find out where there might be E95 uh, masks available because she's concerned to go out without a full, without full protection. Uh, I said I would ask and that concludes my comments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Coldis. Mayor, if I can address that last question. Go right ahead, Andy. Yeah, Anna, Anna, this is Andy. Would you give me a call tomorrow on that issue? Yes, I sure will. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes, Andy, I'll do that. Thank you. And thanks for your help so far. Thanks for putting it on the website. <laughs> okay, uh, Mayor, the next speaker is David Kaczynski. Okay. David, you're up. He's on mute. Unless they walk away. Again? Yeah, I, I click unmute, and I don't know if he's got some override on his thing. I'm not sure. While you're figuring that out, Russell, were there any other public speakers? Yes. We have one more. Uh, let me try to get with Mr. Kaczyns uh, Mr. Kaczynski first. Something here. No, it looks like he's the only one. Uh, let's see. 
Let me just do this. Um, I know we don't usually comment Ms. on stuff, but because Ms. we're going virtual, did you get David yet? I think I have him there. Uh, okay. David, are you there? Oof. He's still on mute. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, there you we go. Go. Yeah, we can. Gotcha. All right. All right. Hi, Council. Um, during the last meeting, uh, Mr. Kalis came up and spoke about the problems in his property. He said it was all resolved. And then a couple of days ago, and this is um, George Kalis, uh, who lives on Hancock. Uh, he called me a couple of days ago, and he had stated that um, he's still having complaints with his neighbor at the um, uh, southwest corner of Holiday, or um, at Luray and Hancock. And um, I drove up there today, and yeah, keeping the social distancing, and we walked along his property line, and there was supposed to have been a berm created, and he was complaining, and it was pretty obvious to me that there really is not much of a berm there, and it, he's got that open eyesore to his property. And um, I don't know, he said it was resolved at the last meeting, but it appears that it was not, and um, he just asked if I can speak to keep the issue in front of the council. Um, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, David. Yeah, just for the record, in response to that, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Mr. Kalis is the one who lives next to a farm. He doesn't like the fact that they're doing farming activities on that property. The magistrate uh, asked Mr. The, the owner of that farm to not berm it, but actually put uh, vegetation to try to help screen the farm from his view. Uh, but apparently what he's referring to is the fact that parts of the farm can still be uh, seen. We're happy to look at it, but again, it's a farm protected by the agricultural laws of the state. Um, and uh, Mr. Killers knows that it is a protected farm. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry that there's still issues there, uh, but uh, you know, we have, we've been told previously to try to uh, help the agricultural properties in the town. So um, it's, uh, it, it's uh, you know, one of those situations uh, where uh, the resident is unhappy with the fact that they're farming the neighboring property. Keith, we were going to, uh, somebody was going to have water tested or something, or where are we on that? Did you hear my question, Keith? I, I can. Mr. Kalis was given the opportunity to test his own water and come back to the magistrate to advise if there are any um, nitrates uh, that had seeped into his groundwater. At this point, um, we have not gotten any tests. The town looked into whether or not it could, could do any testing. The cost was uh, outrageous for the town to be involved in their private uh, property dispute. So as a result, the offer is still open to him that he can test his water at any time and bring it back before the town. Okay. I, I also have been in touch with Mr. Kalis. I will follow up with a call to him and him. He didn't really want to see it. It is protected by the agricultural. But, uh, gentlemen, I can assure you I'll uh, give Mr. Kalis a call tomorrow and uh, see where this is going. Mayor, it looks like we have uh, two other speakers that wish to speak. All right, go ahead. Uh, the first speaker, uh, I don't see the name, but the last uh, four digits of the phone number 7965. I'm going to allow them to speak at this point. If you'll state your name, please, for the record. Name and address. George Kalis, 6721 Hancock Road. Uh, I, I just heard Mr. Gazinski, and I want to thank him for coming by, giving me the time to come by and take a look at this property. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. The the point keeps coming up that this is that he has an egg exemption. Now, if he does, and he does, uh, it's for farming, not for dumping. Nobody wants to accept the fact that this is a dump site. Uh, Keith, you promised me that you would have my water checked, mm -hmm. and uh, the cost is out of sight, as you said. But why am I obligated to do that when he's the one that poisoned the property? He, he, he had, uh, I don't have to repeat all this. Everybody knows about this. A hundred truckloads of, of uh, manure, uh, chemical, chemicals put on to kill the property, uh, the grounds on the property. 
uh, as far as the berm goes, uh, I had Julio, I'm sorry, uh, uh, had Julio, Julio sent Phil out here, and the, uh, uh, Phil is the, whatever, uh, anyway, he's, he's, uh, he, he agreed that there is no berm. All this poison and all this abortion has been running into the canal on the Luray side, and nothing has been done about it because he has an egg exemption. Given the fact that he has an egg exemption, somebody's got to show me where dumping is part of farming. Uh, I just heard 30 acres, the integrity of the 30 acres, and and yet you allow this abortion to go on next door to me. I, I, I don't get that part. I, I know I'm small potatoes, but, uh, you know, I, I, I this 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 thing keeps going on and, and it uh, and, and nobody seems to do anything about it or doesn't want to do anything about it. I, I would invite all of you just to come by and take a look. Take a look. Come down from Griffin Road. You'll see properties that are well maintained. You'll see uh, uh, houses that are well maintained up until you get to this point and then you see this abortion going on. It, it's just not right. And, and the fact that Again, the ag exemption means nothing if you're dumping. Somebody's got to show me what dumping is part of farming. I, I guess that's that's all I got to say. Uh, I don't know, Keith. You promised me something. You're not delivering, but it's going to cost me. I don't know what it's going to cost me to do it. And again, why should I be the one to do it when I'm not the one that that created the problem? Any comments? No, I was just listening to you. This is Delsa. I was just listening to yeah. you, and um, I I want to ask some questions also uh, regarding what you've just said, as to the onus being on you to prove that the water isn't any good. I mean, do we know that for a fact, or is that only something that we can find out through testing? Something you can find out through testing, and again, Keith promised me that he would take care of that, and that hasn't been done. I didn't promise I'd take care of it. I said we were going to look into see if we had a laboratory to do it. We did look into it. Rod can speak to it, uh, and the answer was uh, no, not without a substantial cost to the town. What is the cost, Keith? Uh, Rod can address this. If you do a full profile for a full sample, I think it was in, in between two and three thousand dollars. <laughs> really? Wow. Uh, yeah, and if, I'm, if, I'm if you wanted to look I'm at individual expected. parameters, then then it could it's a lot cheaper. But but the, their minimum invoice was like two hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred and twenty five dollars. But that's only if you want to look at one or two parameters. But if you want a full profile for your water, it's it's in between two and three thousand dollars. There used to be, and I don't know, um, I used to be over in the industrial area off of 136, but on the other side of 595, the northern side over in the industrial, they, they used to test water in there. I only know because of selling some properties, and they would take the water in a sample and get an idea if the well was good, that kind of thing. I don't know if they're even still there, but... Uh, we reached out to Faith I... Analytical, who's the, the vendor we used to use at, at Davey uh, when I was at the utilities department there. We, gotcha. we reached out to the City of Sunrise because they have their own private lab, but they told us that they don't do that. They don't any, do it yeah, any, yeah. Only for Sunrise I customers. mean, this was years ago. They would test the well water. You could test it, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, But uh, that's a little different, I guess, than what we're doing, what, what he, the gentleman is suggesting there. But I might... Um, try and inquire and maybe they still do something like that on an individual basis that is not exorbitantly expensive. Um, have you had uh, problems with your water? No, I have not. Not for 50 years. Uh, that's <laughs> well, that's a good start. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. And, okay. and uh, I don't know why I have to be the one to go through the expense. I didn't create the problem. Understood. 
you, you know, it's, again, ag exemption, dumping. I don't know. I don't get the two. I, I, I really don't believe that dumping is part of, a, of an ag exemption. Well, you and had he's brought in. He's he's brought in, without exaggeration, over five hundred truckloads of mulch, and I. I've submitted pictures already. You guys see all the tree trunks and all the pipe and all the uh, non-garbage, uh, so to speak. Now he he haven't even mentioned the uh, the trenches. He's dug trenches. Now he's filling them up with the mulch. So I don't think he's doing this for free, and I don't think that's farming. Yet it's allowed to go on. I, and it's not just me. My neighbors are crying just as well. And everybody who comes by and looks at it, they give me their condolences. I, I think what the problem is here is is the appearance more than anything. Uh, if if I was truly concerned about my water, Mr. Kalis, believe me, to protect my family, I would have testing done. Mm -hmm. As far as having David come out and look at everything, what is David trying to say? He doesn't want uh, uh, no, I, I, I asked, uh, agricultural I asked, exemption now left no, in the town? I, I mean, I asked, I asked David to come out and take a look because I wasn't getting anywhere. So he's president of Sunshine uh, Ranches. So but I David isn't going to gonna get anywhere doing that. He needs right. to make sure back that and it's forth. A, We're back and forth. We can't be doing. I, I get that, Doug, but I, I really want to say my piece on this. Okay? Please, please. And, uh, you know, you cannot shut down uh, the the egg exemption. And if David is misleading you on this, the no, place you not. need to... No, no, the, the, David is not... Ex no, he's not. I I'm the one that's brought up this egg exemption. And I still haven't got an answer. Is dumping part of an egg exemption? You just been told that... As farm, he has an egg exemption. He's allowed to farm his property. Yes, if, is he allowed if to you dump? need, if you need clarification on here and the true definition, you can get this printed out on the web. Uh, you can ask somebody from town hall. I I don't think going to a president of the HOA is going to get you your answer, Mr. Caleb. No, um, I just, I, I wanted him to talk for me, and he did, and I appreciate it. Let, let, let's go back to the berm. I, I asked uh, Julio, and he sent the... Uh, the okay, we got to really shut this down, guys. This yeah, is just uh, going back uh, and forth. Doug, Doug, I know we're going back okay. and forth. I'm not, uh, the berm. There's no berm. He's required to have a berm, but there's no berm. And yes, as far as Dulcie, as far as appearance, it looks like a, it looks terrible. Okay, we have one other speaker there. All right. All right, go ahead. I'm yeah. done, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, we have one other speaker, Mayor. I believe it's uh, Mr. Lasky. Okie doke. <clears throat> He's on mute. Yeah, I'm trying to take them on. <laughs> Russell, he's on mute. And for members of the public who are watching, the time clock is behind Russell when he's sitting in his chair. So you can just watch it from there. Thanks, Keith. That'd be the vacant chair with Russell Munez. Yeah, he, yeah, that's the one, Bob. I'm hitting <laughs> unmute, and it's not unmuting, so he must be muting his mic or something. So... Mr. Lasky, if you're there, you can speak. You have the mic. He doesn't appear on the list anymore. There it is. I put him as a panelist to try to... Ah, there you go. On 188th Avenue. There you go. We hear you now. Okay. You fellas have reached three septic systems. It's supposed to be a five-foot setback behind each septic system, but you clipped them good. You got one that's leaking profusely right alongside the road. We sent you pictures. I've got a biologist that lives next door to me. And when I say he's a doctor, so he's a PhD. So he's qualified to tell you that it's a danger. Do you know that the coronavirus is fecally transmitted? So the last caller you had was technically correct. If you've got an abundance of feces 
on that property, okay? And then you've got sewage on the side of 180. Hey, what's going to happen when it starts raining, which is going to be real soon, and that stuff really gets spread good, okay? I mean, it, it's common sense. You call any of these guys from the task force. They'll come out and check it. The governor, why don't you give him a call and see how he reacts? This is serious stuff, guys. And I'm one of the, the, the older people out here that needs to be concerned about it. But a lot of people don't understand how this stuff works. And that, that uh, coronavirus envelope uh, wrap like it is could stay there indefinitely. Can you imagine if it gets into the other system? And all it's got to do is train and back, wash back and forth back into the system. So why don't you guys try helping us make a call to the right people? Any answers? I only have one that I've been told by paramedics within my family, and that is when you touch something before you touch your face, wash your hands. I understand that, but that's not really relative to what I just said. Well, it is because <laughs> the only way the only way that the virus is spread is through your nose, your mouth, or your eyes. And therefore, unless you are on the ground rubbing your face in that disgusting stuff you said, there's no reason for you to catch a virus. I've never heard that it was transmitted fecally. But in any event, you can only get it by touching your face with hands. That's it. Or if someone sneezes in your face. Okay. Is there anybody else out there that could offer another answer besides that? Mr. Polikoff, how about you? I'm unfamiliar whether or not Corona can be caught by uh, feces. So I think uh, Council Member Robinson was probably a better expert on that than I am. Don, I missed that, Delta. What'd you say? I said, Maybe that's why we can't find Mr. toilet Lasky's paper time is anywhere. Up. <laughs> Time's up. Okay. okay, we have no other speakers waiting to be uh, called upon. <clears throat> All right, any board reports? Uh, we have one speaker coming forward, uh, Mr. Bright Cruz. Let me bring him up to this podium, if you will. Mr. Bright Cruz, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine, sir. Excellent. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good to Little see week. you. Little uh, weak. Can you can you raise your gain up a little bit, maybe? Is it a little low? There you go. There you go. There yeah, you go. you're on. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good to see you all. It's good to see that we've transitioned to the uh, the technology age. It's great. Um, hey, I just wanted to uh, to give a quick update that the fire assessment board did have a meeting. I think it was the last board meeting that the town held, and that. Um, uh, we were able to get through a significant portion. It still had to go back, so um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we still may need another meeting or two, unfortunately, but uh, we made progress and, uh, and it went well, so um, I think we're headed in the right direction. So everybody stay safe and, uh, and, and be well. Thank you, Steve. Thank Appreciate you. it. Any additional board reports? No, it looks like uh, there's no other speakers looking to come forward, Mayor. Okay, council member comments. I'm here. All right. <laughs> Bring us up to speed, Gary. Okay. So what's going on in town, Gary? I like Gary goes first. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the weather's been pretty nice lately. It's been hot. Uh, no, uh, I'm kidding aside. I have a list here I'd like to go over with everybody if I could. And please bear with me. I'm going to do some show and tell. Are you giving us the hours of Publix, Walmart, and Home Depot? 
Uh, no, but I, can, oh. but I can come close. <laughs> no, but I can tell you what they out to at one or two o'clock in the morning. And a Where do you film. get the toilet paper? Oh, I have a secret supply. I can't, I can't discuss that. It's national security. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd like Again, to tell everybody to, uh, you know, stay safe, obviously. Keep your distance. Um, wear gloves when possible. Uh, the biggest thing I've noticed is everybody discarding gloves. Uh, once they're done with them, they're not discarded in a very proper manner, and they're all over parking lots and things of that nature, and I don't go, that, go out that much. In fact, uh, my, my wife's car sat on uh, half a tank of gas for two weeks now. I'm in shock. So, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can identify with that. Um, everybody should be using masks whenever possible. Uh, if masks doesn't do anything more than make you aware of everybody else around you, Keep your distance, keep, keep your spatial distance. Um, we're very lucky where we live because we have wide open spaces. I go out walking every day now. Uh, and uh, it's amazing all the other people walking. We've all learned hand, hand gestures and hand signs. And they actually the nice ones where you wave uh, with a full <laughs> hand, not, not any Aww. salutes. Um, so it, it's been kind of nice uh, that we're not engaging in conversation, but we're staying, uh, you know, like the width of a road away from each other and things of that nature. And it's all in passing. So, um, you know, so it's kind of nice uh, where we live, where, that we're able to do that. Um, I want to mention um, the use of masks. Um, I have one here. You probably saw me on it with it earlier. It's uh, hold it up a little bit here so you can see it. Uh, this was made by a young lady by the name of Madison Sullivan, and I'll get into that a little bit more in a second. <laughs> um, but you see what I've done here is uh, to make my mask, I took two rubber bands and put it around the loop so I no longer have to have ear pressure while you're wearing it. And if you're wearing it for a prolonged time, it really helps out. Now, that works great if you have a not a lot of hair, like I do, okay? And for guys like me and Andy, this will be working out really great. It's a quickie. <laughs> so, but I just want to make mention of that. Okay, that's one of, that's one of the, the show and tell props. But I'd like to get into that uh, a little bit more uh, just to tell you what's going on in our neighborhood. And I think this is a little, uh, uh, it tells you a lot about where we live. Um, when the coronavirus was first coming out and all the uh, uh, warnings and the, the, nobody was really taking that seriously at that time in March. Um, school was out, everything was going, uh, uh, you know, the, the momentum was building. Um, Madison Sullivan uh, just took it upon herself and she ran around and she baked uh, a ton of cookies. And to keep everybody happy, she hand delivered them to all the neighbors and friends and stuff like that in the entire neighborhood. It was really great. And she did this all on her own. And then when she first started hearing about the, the coronavirus, you know, and she, and she, like everybody else, she got worried that not everyone was taking it seriously. And in Southwest Ranchers and the surrounding communities, we got a lot of older people like me. And that we're at a higher risk. I, I turned 65 this year, folks. Hello. And you know, when the CDC suggested that everyone wear a mask, um, she looked at, you know, people like her aunt, her cousins who have underlying medical issues and wanted to do her part to keep everyone safe. So Madison Lakes loves community projects where everyone jumps in to help. Well, it turned into a, a very large community project. We have three different ladies from the neighborhood all, all helping her sew these masks. Uh, Diana Haas, uh, Diana Snow, uh, Donna Snowball, and Ms. Jolly from the Sikh Society. And uh, the Sikh Society seems to be stepping in wherever, wherever they're needed. I just, uh, my hat's off to them. The Parkers from uh, Sunshine Ranches cut out a bunch of fabric for her and the uh, Morale family traced their hands and cut them in to leave notes of encouragement in each bag and each mask. Madison has delivered dozens of masks, so far mainly in Southwest Ranches, Weston, Pembroke Pines, and Davie. This has been a great project for m multiple families all being or organized by Ms. Sullivan. You know, we're a small town and we don't want anybody to feel like they're alone in this. People have been so happy about the masks and we love seeing their pictures. Uh, she's tried to pick some pretty colorful fabrics and to make everybody happy. So uh, I wanna thank the neighbors. I wanna make a very special thanks to uh, Madison Sullivan uh, for that because she's really, uh, uh, really jumped on the bandwagon to uh, help where she can. And, you know, and we're talking a uh, young lady uh, a teenager, 
you know, who took it upon herself and has been quarterbacking this all along. So uh, thank you, really Madison. Good. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the kind of people we have here for residents and, and I'm proud of them, you know, and I, and I want to thank, uh, um, Councilman Hartman, Bob, thanks for doing all the, uh, social media posting. Um, uh, my wife is telling me that <coughs> on there with the latest and the greatest on uh, Facebook. I don't do Facebook, but she does occasionally. And she says, you're been really, uh, really informative in that, uh, a venue, and uh, I got to tell you, you're a brave man going on Facebook. So my hat's off to you. Yep. Uh, hopefully everybody has a safe Easter and uh, Passover. Um, I would like to mention uh, a point of information coming up, actually a couple points, um, COVID-19. Uh, there's a website, um, Russell, I gave you the, can you cue that up on the screen so everybody yes. can see it? There's a website, uh, it's, uh, as soon as he puts it up. It's got the state of Florida. It's by John Hopkins. Some of, some of you have probably seen this. So for those of you who haven't, uh, mm -hmm. you can drill down by zip code in the state of Florida uh, to be able to get that on there. Do you, do you have that up for us? I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, really, really informative. It's, um, it's, a, it's a dashboard run by the uh, uh, Florida Department of Health. You can actually go to Florida Department of Health.gov, COVID19.gov, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it right there. And uh, Florida Health, COVID19.gov, and then you go scroll at the bottom and you click on the yeah, dashboard. Trying. It's like skipping, it won't let me stay. That's all right. I can, I can, can go there. But um, it gives you a lot of resources, it gives you a lot of information about what's going on right now. And the dashboard is. Uh, the state of Florida, county by county, and then you can drill down. You can see the new cases as they're being recorded. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it, we all have suddenly a lot of time on our hands, at least I do. And uh, it's one of those things I check every day. It's a, you know, hopefully we'll be flattening the curve here with everything that we're doing on, on our part. So I was going to make mention of that uh, for those of you who uh, haven't seen this. It's, it's really informative. Um, anyway, moving on, um, we also have uh, some census data I need to talk about. Uh, right now, Southwest Ranches is, is uh, kind of lagging amongst all our sister cities. Uh, we're at 49.9% in participation. Uh, Cooper City's at 61%. Weston's at 59%. Pembroke Pines is at 53%. Davie uh, is at 47, and the state of Florida right now is at 45%. Um, the census track uh, just locally, uh, the highest number right now is uh, Green Meadows and Deans Ranches. They're at like 62% that have responded to the census. Sunshine Ranches and Ivanhoe Estates are at uh, 60%, and Rolling Oaks and Country Estates are on bringing up the rear at 53%. So we've got some work to do. Hopefully those anybody out here listening who got the, in the mail and hasn't gotten around to it. Uh, it's real easy to do. I did it the same day I got it on the computer. Uh, go right into the website and they give you a confirmation. You can print that out and it, and it really works. Uh, it really, it's really gonna help out our town. I can't mention that enough on that. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about uh, before I turn over the mic is um, those of you who have gotten the CAPR, the Certified Annual Financial Report, Marty did a great job in his team, and Marty, hope you're feeling better. Uh, we know you're on a little under the weather right now. Um, we, the town has got a surplus uh, that's been certified by the auditors, submitted to Tallahassee of $1.07 million. And uh, 440,000 of that was due to the lower expenditures uh, that was uh, performed by our management team and my my hat's off to them, and thank you very much, Andy, uh, Russell, and Marty, and, and your entire team. Please share that. Please share that with them. Uh, we had 65000 uh, due to a higher revenue stream than we thought uh, we didn't know was going to be coming in. Oh, there's the COVID-19 on your screen. I got sorry, it. sorry for the late entry there. That's all right. Sorry. The website right. was Just acting up. It wasn't me. I promise yeah. you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it, it gives you, you can see the counties. Uh, go by county. Let me just back up on this a little bit, scrunch everybody down a little bit. And you see how it gives you all the data. And this is updated twice a day. 
All right. So uh, it's really informative in uh, helping you. And those of you who have seen this already and, you know, are, are familiar with it, you know, um, you know uh, glad, glad you know about it. Great stuff. Also, yeah. It gives it to you by county, by testing, by, um, and then on the, the, they recently added on a new tab, uh, the USA and the world, uh, which you can go to any country and get the same sort of information. And of course, uh, you know, don't go bothering, don't, don't go bothering to go to China. There hasn't changed in three weeks. So we both know that that's uh, a little, a little bit dubious, but at any rate, so I just wanted to make mention to all that, uh, to you right now. And, uh, that's about it, Mayor. I'd love to hear from you guys. I want to join in with you just a second. I'm part of that and say, I want to thank everybody for, uh, watching their P's and Q's and staying home and being cautious when you go out in public. Uh, at the present time, as of the end of today, I have not heard that we have any COVID-19 uh, within Southwest Ranches as of yet, but it is surrounding us. So I just want to thank everybody for being smart, wise, careful, and believing that this is real because it is. So, uh, Go ahead, whoever wants to go next. I just want to add that in. Okay, I'll go next. Um, the last meeting I missed, and the reason I did take myself out of it is because I do have some respiratory issues. I did not want to make anybody nervous, so I opted to stay home, and I've been locked up in here with a three- and a six-year-old, so I'm asking for everybody's prayers because I really, truly need them right now. Um, I hope you're all doing what you're supposed to, <clears throat> keeping your distance, washing your face, hands, wearing your mask. Andy, Russell, everybody at Town Hall, you have done an absolutely incredible job. I am so very par proud to be part of your team. I can't even tell you. Um, I wanted to address something that Anna had said. I spoke to her on the phone about um, this calling. And uh, I've been working very hard. I think if you just go through your phone into your list, you'll find that you have a lot more names in there of people you can reach out and talk to and find out how they're doing and if they need anything. Some of these people just need a phone call just to, to hear another voice, to make sure that they're staying calm and, uh, you know, bring some kind of peace to them in that way. Um, my uh, goal is to stay in here for as long as I have to because I am at the top of that food chain with my issues and uh, I plan on sticking around at least uh, at least till he turns four and she's seven <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again everybody I uh, can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate all the work I want to let all the residents know that at any given time, I know our council and our staff is there for you. Please don't hesitate to call. The first one I tell them to call is Andy. Blow up his phone. He doesn't care. Um, but again, stay safe. Don't go out if you don't have to. There's no reason to. And Gary did bring up the disposal of gloves. Um, I did speak to someone at Publix. I told them they needed a separate bin for the gloves. When you take them off, you take them off inside out and they should be disposed in a special bin as you're leaving a store. Did we lose her? I think she, yep. yeah. She locked up. D, are you there? Can you hear us? We can't hear you. Yeah. Maybe we can come back to her. All right. right there. We'll come back. Who's I next? That, that leaves me. Go ahead, Bob. So first and foremost. There she folks, is. Oh, let's let you finish then. Hey, did you want to finish? I think we lost your mid-sentence. Uh, her mic is muted. Unmute your mic, dear. I did. There you go. I did. Every every there time I lose it, it, it mutes the mic. So uh, uh, I I think I'm finished. And uh, good night, everybody. And uh, 
Who's next? Oh, go <laughs> wait, we're, we're not done yet. <laughs> yep. Let's say good night oh. quite yet. <laughs> yeah. So good we're evening, still in council member comments, dear. Sorry, Bob. No, no problem. So we're, if you listen to all the news reports, we're heading into a critical phase in the next two or three weeks. Uh, th yeah, two or three weeks. And I'll throw up some slides in, in a couple of minutes. You know, when, when uh, all this social distancing and all that discussion started, I, I listened to it all and said, hmm, it doesn't sound like it will work because I don't know if people will do it, but um, it's working and people are doing it. I had to drive down to the office last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago. Time is flying. I've been home a month. A couple of weeks ago, I had to drive down to my office to pick up some of the equipment so I can continue doing my job from home. And I think I was joined by about six cars setting, heading south on I-75. It was like it was 3 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Uh, coming back, less. I had a run out uh, a couple days ago on a quick errand. Uh, of course, I had my mask and, and gloves on, and I'm just observing. And everybody had masks and gloves on, even driving their cars. So I think people have gotten it. Uh, you know, as I said, they're, they're really forecasting, and I'm using the John Hopkins data. I'll, I'll put this stuff up in a minute. But, uh, you know, they're really predicting next week to be the peak. This is John Hopkins data being used by the University of Washington, who those two groups seem to be really on top of this. So I'm glad, you know, in our town, there's nobody around. We have people walking our streets. My uh, wife and her friends had a very creative Friday. They had a cocktail hour right out amongst the four corners of our property. Everybody was 10 feet apart. I went out there. They're all yucking it up. They're having a great time. They really haven't seen each other in weeks. They might text and talk on the phone, but they're, they're making do. They're, they're trying to do the right thing. Uh, I'm not seeing people driving up and down. The other night, I was sitting in my backyard. There were absolutely no airplanes flying over from uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. You couldn't hear a car on 27. You couldn't hear a car on Griffin Road. I've never had that situation before in my life. And this went on for a good half hour. It was shocking. So people have gotten it. People are, are trying to do the right thing. And it's showing up in the numbers. Russell, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to share just for a minute because uh, – I just want to put up the data that I've been looking at. And also, Andy was good enough to provide me with uh, a website, the same one that I think uh, uh, Gary and, and Russell were showing. We can go and look every day. I've been checking. I've been just looking for the word Southwest Ranchers. I looked at it uh, uh, tonight just before the meeting. We still have no cases reported, which is a wonderful thing. It really goes to who we are as a community. But what you're looking at here is the peak for the United States. That's, that's coming. But I think more importantly, these numbers were way out here. They were expecting the peak to be in May. But we're basically flattening the curve, as, as the experts said would happen. But if you take a look at Florida, here's the good news. Florida was supposed to be out here. Let me scroll down just a tad. Florida was supposed to be out. You know, we were supposed to be hitting our, our peak in early the first week or so of May. And it looks like our peak is uh, right about now. You know, this week. So if we can get past this and continue on, I, I don't think it's going to be safe. And this is just Bob talking, watching the news and reading the reports and, and trying to understand this. I think we'll probably be in for a while longer because the problem is if there's still cases popping up out there and in May and everybody yeah, starts getting so back together, we'll, we'll be, you know, sure. the numbers will change pretty quickly. So. I'm, I'm really proud of our community. The fact that all around us, as Doug alluded to, all the cities are, they all have, you know, Weston, uh, Davie, Cooper City, they're all in the 30, 40, 50 person range, which in the big picture, since is what this, this evening is about 440,000 people in the United States that have been confirmed. But in our area, people are doing the right thing. And, and all that matters to me right now is what's going on in our area because this is where we live. This is where we interact. You know, I want to say thanks to all of our good neighbors who are, are doing the right thing and staying inside and staying with their family. Uh, you know, four weeks together with my wife and daughter has definitely changed our relationship for the better. It's been wild. 
my wife and I have had lunch together. I can't tell you how many times we were talking about it. We have not had lunch in 30 years. <laughs> and here we are doing it every day. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. But I also wanted to, you know, reach out. Now, Gary, of course, stole 90% of my thunder talking about Madison and all that. But, uh, you know, Anne brought up how she's working with a group to reach out to offer help to our community for seniors, people alone, residents who need assistance. And if you didn't get the number, it's 954-546-2599. And it's also out on Facebook on uh, Louis, uh, 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 Louis Gregory's uh, uh, Facebook page. Um, there's another group out there. Diane Hawes is leading this. It's on uh, uh, Mignon's uh, uh, Facebook page. She's got something out on a group called Southwest Ranches and Nearby. Um, Diana Hawes and some of her friends are trying to do something similar to what they were doing in DC. You probably have heard Feed the Fight. That's trying to get food to the first responders in the area, restaurants to donate uh, so the guys can stop off and pick up. So they're, they're looking for any suggestions, ideas, donations, any, any help they can get. And I don't have a phone number for Diane and uh, Diana, uh, but uh, if you go out to Southwest Ranches and nearby, uh, it's been plastered out there for the last week or so. Gary, uh, Gary brought up Madison. Madison is, is doing an amazing job for, what is she, a 10th grader or 11th grader, I think. She's just an amazing child. I mean, uh, she's, uh, she, she's, she's in a, a group all by herself uh, in what she's done here in coordinating volunteers to sew masks. Now, if you do know somebody who needs a mask and they're not yet doing surgical masks, I know that Selena Hodges is out trying to locate uh, surgical material so that they can make masks and, and she has some ideas there. Uh, uh, she's a nurse practitioner, uh, that's uh, uh, Madison's aunt, Selena. Uh, but if you, if you know anybody who needs cloth masks, get in touch with Kathy Sullivan. She's handling the distribution of this. Her email address is K-A-T-H-Y Sullivan, Kathy Sullivan 18 at gmail.com. So she's, uh, she's, she's facilitating getting it out. When they get their surgical materials, she'll be getting it out to the hospitals. But right now, I talked to her a day before yesterday, they, they had already made 100 masks and that was just the first round. They're, they're gonna continue on this. So we've got a lot of great things going on in our neighborhood. Uh, I, I just want to plea with anybody who's not following the, the federal government guidelines on social distancing and, you know, staying home and all that, please do it. I mean, people's lives are at stake. I'm, I'm sure everybody's aware of the death, uh, the, uh, the, the statistics on the number of deaths that are occurring through this. This is a real deal. When I was growing up, the, the threat, the concern, <clears throat> the worry was the Russians, you know, the nuclear bombs, the nuclear threat, all that sort of thing. When I was a kid, I don't think I ever remember hearing the word pandemic. Now it's part of a vocabulary and it's part of our life on a daily basis. So folks, stay inside, stay safe, be well, please. Thank you, Doug. Amen. I agree. Awesome. Oh, yours, Russell. Thank you, Bob. Delsa? What are you waiting for me? Well, if you like, you don't I, have to. <laughs> I, I wish everybody well. I preach to no one. And I'd like to thank the town staff as well because they've been excellent. They've got us all together. They've got us all in one place. I hate photographs, but here we are. I am. And we're able to communicate and have a good meeting. And this is, um, it's been really, really great. Russell and Andy have done a great job, and I thank you. All right. Well, we got a little bit yet to go, so. All right. Uh, legal, legal comments. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just hope that everyone has a wonderful holiday, despite uh, what's happening in the world. Happy Passover. Happy Easter to everyone who celebrates. Uh, other than that, no further legal comments. Okay, Mr. Burns. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just to continue the, the theme of the evening, uh, a couple of you mentioned that there are no cases that have been reported in Southwest Ranches, and that is true. I do check it every day. But just to give you an idea of what's in the surrounding community, 
There are 75 positives in Davie, 67 in Weston, 37 in Pembroke Pines, uh, and Cooper City has 15. So that's just the surrounding area. So when you go to the stores, you know, when you run out to Publix, just make sure you're careful and observe uh, proper CDC guidelines and protocols and uh, continue to protect yourself. Uh, I also want to take a moment to, to first of all, thank the council for their support through a, a very trying time. But I'd also like to thank the staff. Uh, we're down to just a skeleton crew here in the building on any given day. The vast majority of staff is working from home. And really the only interruption in service to our residents is they don't have the convenience of being able to walk into the building. With that exception, we are maintaining full service. We're doing plan reviews, we're doing inspections, we're following up on code complaints. Whatever issue comes in from the public, we are continuing to deal with. And so I, I thank the staff. I mean, I've urged them to be careful to protect themselves, uh, but we, are, we will continue to, to serve the community at the same time. This is, I think, gonna be a marathon. It, it's not a sprint. Uh, but we will continue to provide service as well as protect the staff and serve the community at the same time. So other than that, uh, the only thing I want to say in closing is I do need to say a special thank you to two people, uh, one of which is Russell, who you've all interacted with and, and managed to get us together to do this meeting this, meeting this evening. But the other person who's put in an inordinate amount of hours behind the scenes that you haven't seen is Sandy Longo, who's our emergency services manager, and in, in addition to doing her regular job, and same as for Russell and I, spending hours and hours and hours dealing with this as well. So we're here to continue to serve all of you, to serve the community. We'll do the best job we can, and we'll do everything we can to protect the community at the same time. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Okay, uh, number nine, if you would, Russell. Yes, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to point out that we sent the revised item late this afternoon uh, for this item number nine. If you recall, uh, there was a bid opening. That was 10, he said. I'm sorry, you're right, it's item 10. I guess when I get right. number 10, I'll do that. All right, so our item nine is a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, consenting to the city of Cooper City providing water services to 12851 Sterling Road a single family home lying within the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, providing that no further expansion of service shall be permitted without the explicit written consent of the town, <clears throat> providing that connectivity shall not occur until and unless Broward County adopts a new water and sewer connectivity regulation that exempts from mandatory connection homes currently located in the rural estates and rural ranches land use categories, providing for a certified copy of this resolution to be furnished to the city of Cooper City and providing an effective date. All right, looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any public comment on this matter? Yes, I, see, see I see no hands raised, Mayor. Okay, all right. Any additional comments or questions from the council? Okay. Seeing none, call the question. Councilmember Amundsen? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Schroeder? I don't see her. Vice Mayor Schroeder, she's there, but your, your mic is uh, muted. You want her to do a thumbs up or something for a yes? Up there. There, there, there she is. is. There you okay. go. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Mayor McKay? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. All right, number 10 in your correction or update. Yeah, so on number 10, uh, there was a bid opening on Friday. And so that was uh, obviously after the agenda had been published. So uh, when I read the resolution title, it does now have the correct contractor listed. So this is an, a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida approving an agreement with HG Construction Development and Investment Inc. in the amount of $179,709.76 for construction of the Hurricane Loss Mitigation Program Grant funded Green Meadows Drainage Mitigation Improvement Project, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute the agreement 
and providing an effective aid. Motion to approve. Second. All right, any public comment on this matter? I see no hands, Mayor. Okay, any additional questions or comments from council? No. I'm fine. Okay, call no. the question. Council Member Amundsen? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Schroeder? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. All right, 11 approval of minutes. Yes, Mayor, we had one correction to the approval of minutes. There was an email sent. Uh, hopefully you all had a chance to review it. It was a very uh, minor correction to the minutes on uh, 11A, the November 14, 2019 special meeting minutes. And if you would indulge uh, in a, a motion to approve with that correction, uh, we, could, we can approve that tonight. Can we do all three of these together? Yes, you can, Mayor. Okay. Motion to approve all three with the correction. Second. Awesome. Any public comment on this matter? Any corrections from the public? We've been corrected before. <laughs> I see. Uh, We're always being corrected. <laughs> Sorry. I, I see no one from the public raising their hand, Mayor. Okay. All right. Any additional comments? None. Seeing none, call the question. Council Member Amundsen? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Schroeder? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor? Mayor motion passed. Yes. Mayor, the only thing left on the agenda is, is to adjourn. But before we do that, can I ask everybody to give Russell a virtual hand of applause uh, for pulling <laughs> off this meeting tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, well, one other <laughs> thing I'd like to say, if uh, somebody's bored and out driving around looking for something to do, uh, drive by my house if you uh, don't have enough Easter spirit because <laughs> my yard has more bunnies and more eggs and you name it and they're lit up at nighttime so yeah. if you're out and about drive by my house i saw and, your lovely uh, wife the other day yeah so the she's, easter stuff is uh, in full bloom at my house <laughs> so if you all need a, a pep or a bump on there easter my house there is rocking all right so, thank you like thank you mayor Gladly, gladly, a pleasure. I'd like everybody to stay safe. Uh, what we're doing apparently is working, so let's just be diligent about it. And uh, I can't say enough thank you to all of you for participating and helping make this work. And we'll come out the other side. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Second thank it. You. Second it. Appreciate it. Everybody thank stay you. safe. Thank you. All right. We're leaving the meeting. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.